everybody. This is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Beatles News Briefs, your home for all the news you need to know and the best views from the Beatle world. I'm your host, Steve Marinucci. Today, contributing editor Candy Leonard, author of Beatleness, and myself do a very special review of the movie yesterday. But first, let's get into some Beatle news. Paul McCartney announced last week he's writing his first musical list based on, of all things, It's a Wonderful Life. Vanity projects for Paul are not new, and to be honest, this one seems a bit out on a limb for him. But we'll wait to see how this one shakes out. He's done some good things before and some not-so-good things, so we'll, like I said, we'll see and, and take a, a, a pass until uh, this one uh, gets a little more detail. Um, the long-running Abbey Road on the River Festival announced uh, its headliners for next year from May 21st to 25th, 2020 in Jeffersonville, Indiana. They are the Little River Band, Lawrence Juber, Tommy James, and they'll also have a recreation of the Love Album. The full lineup will be announced in September, and tickets and reservations are now available through the website www.arotr.com. And speaking of conventions, um, the Fest for Beetle fans in Chicago is right around the corner from August 9th through 11th. Some of the guests will include Jeremy Clyde of Chad and Jeremy, Denny Lane, Lawrence Juber, Ken Mansfield, Alan White, Steve Hawley, Mark Lewison, and The Weaklings. That should be fun. Tickets are available through thefest.com. We mentioned on Facebook recently we were hesitant to see the movie yesterday. Well, we finally did see it. And Candy Leonard and I have done a discussion, debate, on our views on the movie. Here's our discussion from two different perspectives. Take a listen. Okay, I'm here with Candy Leonard, a contributing editor. Hey, Candy, how you doing? Good, Steve. How are you? I'm doing fine. And we thought, since we both, fin- I should say I finally saw yesterday, last week, Candy came up with the great idea of doing a Siskel and Ebert type review of the movie since we do have we've kind of kind of felt each other out as far as our feelings about the movie but we we both feel a little differently about it so we're going to do a Siskel and Ebert kind of review neither of us have really talked extensively so this is going to be kind of a surprise to both of us the way we feel about it it will have fresh energy it will have fresh that there there's a good there's a good term for you um anyway um who wants I mean, we, everybody well, knows. Why don't you the, go ahead? I know that you were, and I know that people who read you on Facebook and follow you uh, are aware that you were very reluctant to see this movie. Yeah. And look, and, I mean, and, let's and, just, and I know that there were some people who were trying to convince you. Some people said didn't want to try to convince you. But you, for what, so my question for you would be what made you decide to see it? And what do you think? Well, let me let, let me go back a well, little further. Also, I, want to, I also want to know about your reluctance. Okay. Let me go back a little further. And just for anybody who who is really blissfully unaware of the movie, <laughs> just, just explain that the movie is about a guy who um, is apparently the only person who remembers the Beatles. Right. Nobody, nobody else remembers the Beatles. The Beatles don't exist to all these other people in the movie. So that's which is a, which is a, a unusual plot line to begin with, but that's the that's the plot. It's actually a plot line that has been around in fan fiction for a very long time. I mean, not developed in the way oh, it was really? filmed. Really, but the basic essence of it that the Beatles never existed has been in fan fiction, and I think there was a show on in London and the West End briefly in the seventies or eighties, maybe mm-hmm. that took on this theme. Um, I mean, if you're a Beatles fan, the question is something that you ponder, right? Like, so it's kind of right. It's not far fetched in a way. Yeah, I should. You know who I should talk about fan fiction to is Susan Ryan. Ask her, because that was Susan's thing. Um, right. Right. But in any event, 
Anyway, so I think anybody I, who's listening to this probably knows about the movie, and maybe you know we can get into it. I don't know. What else? I mean, do, what else do you want to say up front no, about nothing, the movie? Nothing. Nothing. That that was as far as I wanted to go. My reluctance uh, when I first heard about the movie, when I first heard about the idea of the Beatles not existing, I just kind of cringed a little bit and I went, what? And then to hear that Ed Sheeran was involved, it just seemed like a little bit of a, you know, a little bit too formulated too you know, too, too much of a thing to uh, made for a certain audience, which it, yeah. actually it is. It is made for a certain audience. Who do you think the audience is that it's targeting? Who do you think? I think it's a younger audience for sure because number one, because Ed Sheeran is involved. And number two, it kind of gets people who don't really know about the Beatles kind of a, an awareness of them. Mm-hmm. So I, the, the, but that whole thing, you know, the whole idea of that just kind of, I, again, it made me cringe a little bit. And so my wife, my son had seen it. My son saw it about two weeks ago and he came home and said, dad, you should go see it. And I said, yeah, okay. Okay. And my wife finally said, let's go see it. And I said, Oh, okay. And I, so why were you, why at that moment? <laughs> like you had heard enough good things or what? I had heard enough about it. <laughs> um, I had heard enough about it. A lot of people, like you mentioned on Facebook, when I said I was, I wasn't really interested in seeing it said, yes, you should go see it. And there were, there were opinions. There were pros and cons, you know, right. some of them agreed with me, uh, my pre seeing it feelings that it wasn't, you know, it, it was kind of weird. Right. And and so after what seeing it, after seeing it, my feelings really didn't change that much. <laughs> okay. one thing, the one thing the one thing that that I n- noticed was. You know, they they hyped it as a Beatles movie. And they being, I, they like, being they being well, social media, and you know, the everybody that talked about it hyped it as a Beatles movie. I didn't see it as a Beatles movie at all. I saw it as a romance. Period. Right. And I, and well, I, I think in the, in the universe that you know, in in Beatles world, which can be a bit of a bubble sometimes, we would perhaps perceive it as a Beatles movie or want to, or, or sure. tend to see it that way. Whereas sure. like you're saying about the target audience, they may not, they may just see it as, you know, is it, is it a Beatle themed rom-com or is it a rom-com with a Beatles theme? In other words, I, I think that Beatles, I guess what I'm saying is I think Beatle fans maybe focus on the Beatles uh, aspect in a different way than other right. people. Right. Right. And I, and even seeing it, I didn't really feel that it was that much of a Beatles movie. Okay. Uh, I, I thought rom-com was probably a better description. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was okay. I mean, I didn't get thoroughly excited about it. I the Did you laugh out loud? A little performances were um, were good, I think. Um, and I don't have her. Unfortunately, I, I should have called up her um in fact i'm going to get it now uh, the cast list um um so, I, I'm, I didn't hear what you said you did laugh out loud or you didn't i think i i think i did probably once or twice yeah. uh, i actually laughed out loud a few times even the second time i saw it i think it's very funny it i found it it had a a goofy humor about it that i really liked i thought i thought uh uh, Lily James mm-hmm. was was really great. Yes, I, she was. I I did not I didn't feel the same about um excuse me about uh, Hymas Patel. I thought he was okay, mm-hmm. but I thought I thought Lily James was really 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 good who played Ellie. Um, I thought most of the performances were okay. Um. I don't want to. One thing. One thing I don't want to do, and and I mean that's up to you, is that I don't want to reveal the kind of surprise thing for people who have not seen it yet. Um, I I can't imagine any. I mean, I think anybody who would listen to this would be someone who would have seen it. Probably. 
Yeah, I think that, we have to assume that, or maybe we should just put a spoiler alert. This podcast. Yeah. Be, I think, like, I think, see see the film before you listen. Yeah, or or just be aware that we may we may say things that it will you know you won't know about unless you've seen the movie. Right, because but, because you and I I think would be very difficult to really get into this in the way that we would like without that. We're doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Um, I don't know. It, it's. Yeah. But I, okay. So you were so you were talking about so that you saw it as a basically a rom com, not a Beatles film. Right. Because I thought the whole the, pretense of why he didn't, or why nobody knew the Beatles, was a little bit um, hard to believe. Um, well, everything about it is hard. It's a fan. I, I don't know what right. exactly what genre it would be called. I would call it like a fantasy, I guess. Or right. No, know. I I agree with that. But but it, the whole idea of the whole pretext of the movie just was kind of eh, okay. Didn't win you over, huh? No. I mean, I felt like you did at first too. Like when I first heard about that the movie was going to exist, I was very unenthused, you know. Mm-hmm. And then um, the Ed Sheeran thing, I felt like you did. I, I am no fan of Ed Sheeran. Um, anyway, but I guess actually, the- actually, I thought Sheeran was was halfway. He was perfect. Movie. He was perfect. Uh, he wasn't. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't over, um, overly pretentious. He was very natural. Exactly. I'll tell you. I'll tell you who else's performance in that movie was great was Kate McKinnon. I oh, really. I, re- I think she I was really, the star of the movie. Yes, I think she. I think she was too. I think she was. She was much better than, than, than uh, you know Hamish Patel. I, I won't say better than Lily James or Hamish Patel, excuse me. Well, I, I won't say character. better than Lily James, but but she her character was perfect. I mean, her, her character she, was perfect. It was she like better. Really this kind of like modern day Cruella de Vil or something of the music industry. She was she was fabulous. Just well, fabulous. She, and she also brought a nice Saturday Night Live thing to the movie that I thought was that that the the movie really kind of needed. Um, but. Um, not sure and, what you mean by that. Well, I mean she's a she's a Saturday Night Live person, and that's right. where, and and you know that kind of she brought that, you know that little texture to the movie that uh, that uh, made the movie, um, you know, a, a little better for it. Okay, yeah. But I'm... I thought, but the the whole idea of the 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 movie just the whole thing, the whole the way it transpired. Hmm, I mean, I, I liked the I liked the fact that they went to Liverpool. Yeah, that was um, nice. I thought that was very nice. Uh, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the, the you know there were there were places and and things in there. There was somebody, one of my Facebook friends, uh, Donna Rose, is in the movie. She's in the. Um, She's in the uh, the scene where they're where they're and I can't remember it exactly where they're where they're talking together, and she's she's sitting behind them and I can, and I made out Donna very easily. It was very easy because because uh, Donna and I have met, and um, so that was really nice to see Donna in there. Um, it, but yeah, and uh, you know to see the Eleanor Rigby. Uh, gravesite and, and a few other things that they did that I mean, was it was really i mean i'm thinking about this as you, you know i hadn't thought about the trip to liverpool aspects of it but it, it you know again when you talk you know as you, as you pointed out you know it's made for with a younger audience in mind i think what what that you know the, the tour to the visit the side trip to liverpool i mean the movie teaches about the beatles in a lot of ways Mm-hmm. In, subtle, in subtle ways, you know, and so I agree with you. It's not a quote Beatles movie, whatever that even means, but they're integral to it. They're, the plot revolves around them. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's part. That's the whole. And I think that the the fact that it, and and I think it elevates them enormously. See, this is the thing. Like I I feel like as a hardcore fan or whatever you want to what I want to call myself, I feel like it celebrates the Beatles. And, so you, and you've seen it more than once, right? I, I've seen it twice. I was going to go with my um, kids and grandkids, but we had to cancel it. We couldn't do it, um, which I was very disappointed. But, um, yeah, I saw it twice, and I would see it. I tell you, I cannot remember the last, as an adult the last time I went and saw a movie again. <laughs> Seriously, um, I uh, 
you know, I had, you know, under different circumstances. One, I was, I had a pass, so I went with a bunch of, you know, Boston area Beatle people and were in the audience. And then the next one is like, a, you know, with a friend who wanted to see it. And I would see it again. It's funny. It was actually different the second time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you, I don't know if other people might have, well, you know, who have seen it multiple times have this experience. I felt, and again, like I'm not a regular viewer. I'm like a Beatle writer observer. So, you know, I'm a, but what, what I liked, what I enjoyed about it the second time was that I didn't, it's not that I didn't have to pay as close attention, but I could pay attention to different things. So I saw, okay. you know, in other words, I had the basics and I could kind of notice other things. And, and I found when I was watching it the first time that I had to kind of uh, stop myself from thinking too much about it as I was watching it, because then I wouldn't be able to watch it. In other words, there was a lot going on. And I guess, I guess it's, maybe this is what it is. It's like, I wanted to think about it more while I was watching it. And I couldn't do that the first time because I'd miss stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so it's like it was already a little bit unpacked by the second time I saw it. Which is interesting because I didn't see I didn't see that much in it that would warrant that kind of in-depth analysis. Oh, I like, did. I, I did. I mean, I think that um, something I was going to say about seeing it the third time. I, 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 I know what I want to say, that I actually think I enjoyed it more the second time. Okay. In some weird way. And I suspect I may enjoy it more, if I, well, especially if I see it with my grandson or grandsons, I definitely will enjoy it more the third time. And again, it's, it's because it, it really does celebrate and elevate the Beatles in a way that um, – is both very big and very small and, you know, personal and, you know, cosmic at all at the same time. It's, it's interesting that, um, that, um, there's no actual Beatles music in the film until the very end, until right. they play Hey Jude, which shows you that, that I mean that that's basically Apple giving its blessing to the movie, oh, and I can and and I can see in a different time Apple not doing that, but they've done yeah. it they've done it now with this movie because um, I think in in good part because of social media and they kind of saw especially with the Ed Sheer, with Ed Sheeran in it that it would get it would get um, a lot of attention from social media and it did. It really, it really did. Um, so. Well, I think, you know, I think Apple, I think I'm assuming that what drives them is also the quality of the project and the previous work of the people involved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the Beatles are going to work with Tom Hanks and Ron Howard and, you know, the folks who did this. In other words, they, I don't see they have to like, the content and the story and, and, and it's about their legacy. Like in other words, if, if one of the things that drives these decisions is what does this say about us? What does this mean for our legacy? I think this movie is wonderful. I mm -hmm. mean, be, because basically the takeaway is, you know, the world would not have been, it's not, you know, the world, what was the front line she used? The, the woman from Liverpool, you know, the world is a better place because of them, I guess was the line. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, all you need is love. In other words, all the themes, it was a very positive movie, like compared to other movies or even other rom-coms, you know, mm -hmm. where there's maybe some tension in a relationship or, there, or there's a, you know, there was nothing, there was no friction here, right? or if it right. was, it was humorous, right? In other words, it's very positive. Even the, the scenes where they were deciding about, you know, are they going to sleep together? She doesn't want a one night stand. It was all very honorable right it was mm -hmm. all very you know because i'm thinking oh with my nine-year-old grandson what about that dialogue blah 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 i'm thinking no this is perfectly fine god knows what he sees that's so much worse and harsher and tougher right like this the movie had a sweetness about it i thought mm -hmm. that really really came through and when you think about a lot of media these days that is certainly not a word you would use that's true. There is one direct connection to the Beatles um, that I just noticed looking at the credits here on IMDb. The music was mixed by Sam O'Kell, who 
did the mixing on um, the 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 recent Beatles boxes, the Pepper and the White, <laughs> White Album, and I assume the the rumored Abbey Road box that he he just left Abbey Road. He just quit. Right, so he um, so there was Beatle involvement throughout. Right. So there is a direct there is a direct connection with the Beatles here that that um, um, that isn't really indicated uh, i mean outside of the fact that apple gave its approval and they they let um they let them use hey jude at the end which pro- probably which cost them a lot yeah any, any time, thought, didn't you think the whole hey dude thing was hilarious no actually i didn't like that part i i i thought it was funny did you yeah why didn't what i'm curious it's just find it funny i'm i'm a i guess i'm a um you know, I'm a, uh, a, purist. a a purist. Yeah, I don't I don't particularly like. Did them. you feel that it was like somehow um, insulting to them or demeaning to them or? I wouldn't say demeaning. I thought it was just kind of a watering down type of thing. It was a pandering thing. I'll well, cry. see, to me, I took it as like a commentary. Like, of course, today somebody would say that, of course. Right. And. And the silliness, I don't, I don't know, it just struck me as really funny and also kind of, I don't know, I just thought it was very funny. All right, let's, let's since, since we made reference to the fact that we we're going to talk about spoilers, this is the big spoiler of the film. And so if you have not seen the film, you might want to, you know, stop here. Um what did you think about John's appearance? I the quote quote John's appearance. Yeah. That kind of. I was startled. I I probably I was I too. Even, I might have even gasped. I I was not expecting that. I had heard there there. I mean I I watch you know I get headline alerts from Google and right. I had, I had seen uh, a headline that said something about all four Beatles appearing and I figured that you know, that maybe one of them appeared. And in fact, when James Corden introduced Ringo and Paul, I was expecting both of them to walk out. And I was surprised that they didn't. And I kind of went, oh, okay. Yeah. And then when, when <laughs> quote, John appeared, I was like, oh, that surprised me. That's not something yeah. I expected. Yeah, I didn't expect that either. I, 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 the first time I saw it, well, again, here's where seeing it again kind of gave me more space to think about it in the moment. Um, I didn't, it didn't, I mean, I was startled. I was really, I mean, the actor was just spot, I mean, perfect, you know, it just, yes, of course, that's what he looked like. I didn't fully get how it, like, I, I wanted it to fit into the story more. I wanted it to make more sense within the world that the film created and I wasn't quite able to make it do that until the second viewing and even then I'm not sure I did I mean you know it was like John not John um who still was able to give him the advice that Mm -hmm. basically all you need is love right right so yeah it was quite startling I think I think I'm knowing how protective Yoko's image. It's a kind of it, it, that's something to ponder that she had allowed that. I mean, I, I'm not comp- I'm not complaining about that. Uh, in fact, that's probably one of the points in the movie that I actually thought was was good. Oh, you like that whole thing? I think I, I yeah I think I kind of like that. Like I said, it was a total shock to me. It was a surprise. Because I wasn't expecting that, um, and I think that actually that actually kind of worked in the context of the movie. Well, I'm thinking about how he had to. It was really kind of a, as I'm thinking about it now, and I'm thinking of like you know, because your feelings are neutral at best, but yet you like that. I'm thinking, hmm, why did Steve like that? And I'm thinking that what the, you know, he had to drive that long distance. So that whole scene kind of put you, the viewer in a whole other place. Remember like, and I, and I saw it twice. So I remember, you know, in other words, he had to drive a long way to get there. So the whole crazy world of Kate McKinnon and showbiz was kind of like left for a moment. And then you went to this quiet, reflective place mm-hmm. with, this, with this character 
And so it really, and, and it was, and you knew who it was, and it was a, it, it that scene had a seriousness to it, I think, that was was a, a a contrast to the rest because the rest of the movie was really kind of silly and sweet and goofy, if you think about it. I mean, I don't know. That's right. Funny. No, and you're you're absolutely right about that. Um, you're absolutely right there that 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 that's what um, that was. I, I, I another thing that I'm thinking about is the the whole idea of you know how he how he got onto this uh, thing of him being the only you know person that knew about right. the Beatles and the and the and the few times in the movie where that te- where that premise fell and it didn't that was I like, know that that was one that was another thing that kind of that I I think that's probably one of my stronger objections is well, that that bothered me too that bothered me because I, one of my pet peeves with movies is things like that where there's these logical instances these they don't work or they're not they create a world for you and then they violate it and but at one point I realized or I decided that with this movie I had to let it go. In other words, mm-hmm. you suspend your disbelief. Okay, but I felt you, it was asking you to do that a little more, <laughs> you know, than, mm-hmm. than some. And so at some point, because the, whole, the premise is so crazy to begin with that you kind of, you know, it's almost like if they were running alongside the outside of the train. Okay, sure, whatever. You know, it became, I don't know, at some point it disarmed me and I was there. You know what I mean? Like I was. Right. I, like I didn't care anymore that there were these threads that didn't quite work for me. Right. But I didn't see them. Right. In terms of in terms of Beatleness, in terms of your your book, how does this movie fit in for you? I'm I'm curious. Well, I mean, several ways. <laughs> it the movie reeks of Beatleness. The movie is Beatleness. <laughs> the movie the the movie um, celebrates. Beatleness as a force in the world, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, in terms of the history I tell, the story I tell, I, um, I don't. I mean, even those in this film, I mean, uh, other than the character from Moscow and Liverpool, like you didn't get a sense of people who, well, nobody knew them, right? Mm-hmm. So, so it kind of, I, I don't know. I mean, I just. It, I guess the way I th- as thinking about how it relates to my book, I guess what I would say is that um, you're right that it creates the, the film creates interest in young people. And so hopefully they'll find my book and want to learn more <laughs> about it. You know, um, I don't know. I, but but the whole concept of Beatleness, I mean, that's what the movie is about. The movie is about Beatleness and a world right. in, in a and a world in which uh, Beatleness thrives despite this freak thing that happened which by the way i mean did you i i may be wrong about this but i believe that that whole uh blackout you know that global blackout scene used the last chord from um a day in the life life. yeah i i think i i think i was thinking that too and i think it used it in the with the same effect as it's used in Yellow Submarine, where it takes you to a different place. In other words, you're, it brings you to a different reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's and I, the other thing too. I think the commentary, like who else didn't exist? Coca Cola, like that's funny, but it's also there's something profound about it. Um, Harry Potter, again, funny but sort of profound. Cigarettes, mm-hmm. right? Cigarettes. Um, Oasis which I thought was funny. Yeah. See, there were all these real world things introduced in the movie. And then you have this uh, unreal world thing of the Beatles not existing. It was hard to reconcile. Well, my big issue was how is it that he had, his, you know, like, he, you know, the Rolling Stones existed. Okay. I will accept mm-hmm. that as, okay, different track. Fine. Okay. Rolling Stones existed. Oasis not. Okay. Got it. However, David Bowie, and this is a bigger topic for now, but I maintain that the line to Bowie goes straight from the Beatles. So no Beatles, no Bowie. But one could argue that. But his Bowie records were there, right? Well, actually, no no Beatles, no Rolling Stones, because the Rolling Stones recorded I Want to Be Your Man. 
Yes, but they, yes, I agree. I mean, yes, I mean, I think someone could argue that too, but I think, I think one could argue the case that as a blues group, in other words, they, they, they started out with a slightly different, uh, you know, mm-hmm. traject, envision trajectory. I mean, obviously they want to be famous and make money and, 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 you know, have sex a lot, but I think that they, you know, musically they were, you know, if you were tracing like, music vintage there's almost a little bit of a split there in a way into yeah the, the, you know what i mean i don't know maybe i'm overstating it but i don't know anyway candy thank you this has been this is i wish we could continue on for uh much longer i um this was really really interesting and i got um i i don't know that i'm going to go back and see it again i i have to say that um i mean if it comes on streaming um you know, I'll probably sit and watch it, you know, uh, streaming. Um, but yeah. as far as as far as going back and paying to see it again, no, I don't think so. Uh, but you would. Oh, I certainly. I, yeah, I definitely would. Um, well, also because with my grandsons. But yes, I would. I, I think it's a very interesting movie. I mean, I think the whole premise just elevates the Beatles so much and speaks to their global importance, really. I mean, and, and I think it does it in this kind of sort of wacky way you know it's like a, and I'm, the word goofy the words goofy and sweet come to mind but 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 it but it really is it, the whole premise and the way and these little subtle things harry potter cigarettes Coca-Cola, it, it it makes a statement about the beatles place in the world in, in global consciousness i think it does and it in a very subtle not heavy-handed way that's what oh. i think it does Okay. Well, there you have two different opinions about yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about Ed Sheeran and Steve, you and I both. Part of our skepticism was Ed Sheeran. You know, I thought he was, we agreed that he was kind of good in the role. But what, what Ed Sheeran for me evoked Mike Myers evoking Peter Asher. You know, you know that uh, Peter Asher is a, has worked with Ed Sheeran and is a huge, huge fan of Ed Sheeran. He's in fact, I didn't in, know that. It doesn't surprise me, I guess. In but. an inter- in an interview I did with Peter, um, I don't know, a year or so ago, he raved about Ed Sheeran. He really did. He 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 has a uh, he really likes Ed Sheeran a lot. He's like I said, he's worked with him and and he um, he uh, said uh, you know Ed is a an incredible talent. Well, so. Ed's Ed's. Um, in makeup and costuming, not so much the costume, but his makeup, the goof, the red hair and the goofy glasses, just to me, I, I was just seeing not so much Peter Asher, but Mike Myers as like, you know, the Austin Powers character is very funny. So I just wanted to put <laughs> that out there. Interesting. Okay. So go see it or not. There, there, there you go. Thank and you again. Let know, and let us know what you think. Yeah, that's, a, that's the other thing. Please let us know what you think. Um, anyway, um, thank you, Candy. Thank you, Steve. In the latest chart news on the Billboard 200 dated July 27th, the Beatles 1 album is at number 50, down from number 41 from last week. Abbey Road is at 61, up from 65. And the White Album is at 152, down from 151. On the Artist 100, the Beatles are number 24, down from number 21. On the latest UK official charts, Top 100 Albums, dated July 26th, the Beatles 1 sits at number 23, down from 22, and 67 to 70 is at 89, down from 88. And it's not on the chart this week, but Paul McCartney's Amoeba gig from his new reissues debuted on the chart last week at number 82, then promptly fell off. Looking back in history, July 25, 1963, Scylla Black audition for, for EMI. July 26, 1965, Silla Black made her live debut in the U.S. at New York's Persian Room at the Plaza Hotel. July 27, 1967, Pirate Radio was outlawed in the U.K., and it was also the day that the BBC launched Radio 1. July 27, 1976, John Lennon won his green card that enabled him to stay in the U.S. July 29, 1965, the Beatles movie Help World premiered in London. July 30th, 1968, the Beatles' Apple Boutique closed its doors after giving away its remaining stock. July 31st, 1960, the Silver Beatles backed a stripper named 
Janice, and the group reportedly played with Paul McCartney on drums that night. August 1st, 1st, 1971, George Harrison, Bangladesh concert at Madison Square Garden in two shows featured Ringo Starr, Eric Clapton, Leon Russell, Billy Preston, and Bob Dylan. August 2nd, 1963, Sweets for My Sweet by the Searchers hit number one in the UK. August 3rd, 1963, the Beatles played their final show at the Cavern. And August 3rd, 1971, Paul McCartney announced his new group, Wings, with himself, Denny Lane, Linda McCartney, and Denny Sywell. Happy birthday, July 25th, to Jim McCarty of the Yardbirds, July 26th to Mick Jagger and Darlene Love, and August 1st to the late Denny Payton of the Dave Clark Five. And departures, um, July 29th, 1974, Cass Elliott passed away, and on July 30th, 1989, promoter Larry Parnes, who worked with the Beatles, uh, passed away. Some of the albums released uh, uh, this week in history, July 30th, 1964, Rolling Stones, Out of Our Heads, August 1st, 1969, Jethro Tull's Stand Up, August 2nd, 1965, Sonny and Cher's Look at Us, August 2nd, 1971, The Mothers of Invention film at Fillmore East, uh, at which John and Yoko appeared during those shows, but they are not on the album. And August 3rd, 1969, Creedence Clearwater Revival's Green River. Thanks for tuning in and listening. You can catch our shows on fab4radio.com, Beatles Arama, and also on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please join our Beatles News and Information Group on Facebook for the latest in the Beatles world, and check out our That's What I Want Beatles Store page on Facebook for gift ideas for yourself or your favorite people, and you can find links for both Candy Leonard's Beatleness book and my Meet a Monkey Davy Jones ebook on that page. And look for our next show, and please subscribe. We'll be looking for you. Till next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying, Be seeing you. that one market fab one thing left to say we'll see you next time